But first, some breaking news. I can exclusively reveal it was Anthony Albanese's personal decision to support the vote at the United Nations to grant Palestine a seat. There was still ongoing discussion about whether to abstain when the Prime Minister made the final call. Al Anthony Albanese confirmed this to Labor caucus today, saying, and he said this twice, and I quote, it was my decision. So this United Nations vote was Albanese's captain's call. That's what he told Labor caucus today, twice saying he made the decision. Now, he made these remarks in Labor caucus when Labor MP Deb O'Neill asked him what he was doing to tackle anti-Semitism. Well, the Prime Minister never directly answered her question, instead speaking about the United Nations vote. Well, this is the most disgraceful decision yet taken by Albanese and Penny Wong. And it was a decision that Penny Wong and Deputy Prime Minister Richard Miles agreed with. Rewarding a terrorist organisation which has made no concessions at all towards peace by voting to grant it a seat at the UN. The UN which was created in the wake of the Holocaust to make sure the dark anti-Semitism of the Nazis never happens again. What a failure of an organisation and a failure of our government. Penny Wong and Albo voting to give Palestine, where let's not forget Hamas is the current governing body in Gaza, membership status. Now, Penny Wong says this reflects Australia's commitment to a two-state solution. The only problem, of course, is that Hamas and the Palestinians don't want a two-state solution. They only want one state, their own. They want the destruction of Israel, the annihilation of Jews. Well, here was Israel's response at the UN. This institution here, the United Nations, was founded with the mission of ensuring such tyranny never raises its ugly head again, never. Today, you are about to do the exact opposite and advance the establishment of a Palestinian terror state which will be led by the Hitler of our times. The Hitler of our times. The Hitler of our times, precisely. Australia moving to recognise Palestine, a seat at the UN is fantasy land, especially when Hamas is the current governing body in Gaza. I mean, suppose the vote got through. Would the UN just welcome with open arms the Hamas leadership or Mahmoud Abbas, who supported the October 7 massacre? It's incomprehensible. Well, Penny Wong's spin on this is that Hamas would hate the resolution. Have a look. A two-state solution, both Israel and Palestine, is the opposite of what Hamas wants. Hamas does not want peace and it does not want long-term security for the, for the State of Israel. Well, it's rubbish to say that Hamas wouldn't welcome this historic vote because they did welcome it. They said, and I quote, the Hamas said that the resolution is an affirmation of international cooperation. And all they had to do to achieve this outcome was ruthlessly and in cold blood murder thousands of Jews on October 7 and drag Israel into a war it never wanted, an impossible war, tracking down the terrorists while trying not to kill hostages or Palestinian civilians. No concessions have been made by any of the Palestinian leadership about Israel's right to exist and there have been no commitments to stop terror. Nothing. This resolution is so absurd that Australia is utterly out of step with our allies, as Simon Birmingham pointed out today. Neither of our AUKUS partners supported this resolution. The majority of our Five Eyes partners did not support this resolution. So when you've got the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, as well as, of course, others like Sweden and Switzerland, other key democratic partners, Germany or Italy, what is it that the Albanese government has such great foresight over that all of these other key democratic partners, key security partners of Australia have come to a different conclusion on? 
The Australian's foreign editor, Greg Sheridan, says the only explanation for such a move from Labor is tawdry domestic politics. He writes that the macro-political calculation for Labor is obvious. There are 100,000 Jews in Australia and nearly a million Muslims. He writes that almost all Muslims are opposed to Israel, so Australian politics and foreign policy will now contend with a permanent anti-Israel dynamic. He says a more responsible and experienced government with an ounce more courage and heart would have avoided this needless sectarian divide. Now, many commentators have pointed out that this move is Albanese and Wong overturning decades of bipartisan support for Israel. But in truth, the moment Albanese stepped into the lodge, he abandoned Australia's historic commitment to Israel. Everything Albanese and Penny Wong said prior to the last election about their approach to the Middle East being bipartisan has turned out to be a lie. Their greatest failure is turning their back on the anti-Semitism crisis that's unfolding right now in university campuses and on our streets. Now, Greg Sheridan blames domestic politics. And sure, that's definitely one reason. But let's not forget where Albanese's own heart lies, that he himself was once a pro-Palestinian protester. Now, Albanese often says when he's asked about this topic that he knows this is a difficult issue for people on both sides of the debate. Have a look. Some Australians will have strong views, and I understand that, uh, particularly people who have relatives uh, either in Israel or in Gaza or the West Bank uh, will have uh, strong views, and it will be... It is a difficult time. He utterly misses the point. This isn't a difficult issue because Jews have family in Israel, although, of course, many Jews do have family in Israel and many actually have sons, young sons, fighting Hamas in Gaza right now. But he misses the point because what Albanese clearly doesn't understand and has never understood is that this is an existential crisis for Jews the world over. That's why it matters so much. Penny Wong and Albanese and other Labor figures, they try to make this about Netanyahu. But I'm sorry, it doesn't matter who is in power, whether it's Netanyahu or another leader, because the terrorists aren't targeting Netanyahu, they're targeting Jews. Jewish babies, Jewish children, teenage girls, mothers, and the elderly. Hamas wants to kill Jews plain and simple. This is history repeating itself over and over again, an enemy determined to wipe out the Jews. And yet Albanese stands and says this is a difficult time. People feel strongly about it because people have family in the Middle East on both sides. No, it's a difficult time because the Jews are fighting for survival. We're fighting against those who are trying to exterminate us yet again. And instead of leadership when we need it the most, we see American politicians absurdly call for elections in the democracy of Israel. We'll wake up Joe Biden, call for elections in Gaza. And we see politicians in Australia squib it and back an irrational resolution to give the terrorists a seat at the table at the UN the very body created to try and protect Jews from the existential threat we're facing right now, the very body that officially gave Jews a homeland in the first place. This is why it's a difficult time. And your support of the resolution backing the seat at the UN without any peace agreement or any concessions only emboldens the terrorists and puts Israel in a more isolated and vulnerable position.